Hey guys, Caitlin with Gravel here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my video editing setup that I use when I'm traveling 10,000 miles away or just 100 anywhere away from my typical desk setup where I'm editing videos and getting stuff done. This actually features the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch. I'm loving this thing. I got it on the day of release and I'm really, really happy that I got this iPad. And these two working cohesively is an awesome, awesome thing. And so I'm gonna share with you kind of how I do that and the accessories along the way. So let's get into it. So before I kind of dive into why this is my setup, and this is exactly how I'd be using them if I'm traveling abroad, if I'm in a coffee shop, if I'm in an Airbnb, you know, anything like that. This is how I have them next to each other. How I got to this setup for travel is my desk setup at home is the Apple Studio Display 27 inch. I absolutely love that monitor. And I know that that monitor gets a ton of slack because it's like less bang for your buck because it's $1599, $1,599 um, for like a standard display. Display, but I absolutely love it. It makes me excited to sit down and edit videos and that's just something Apple does. And unfortunately, I'm just an Apple fangirl. I've learned that, you know what? I just love Apple products. What can I say? It's who I am. Having that 27 inch setup has really allowed me to be very effective with my time when I'm sitting down at the computer and getting edits done. But when I'm traveling, obviously I'm not gonna have a 27 inch display somewhere in my bags, that's ridiculous. So then I started thinking, okay, well, I have the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, it's a 14 inch and I love the 14 inch size for portability and packing, super easy. My next upgrade will probably be the MacBook Air 15 inch solely to lose some weight in the bag. Um, and then when I pair that 14 inch MacBook Pro that I have currently with the iPad Pro 13 inch, what are we getting? 27 inches of screen real estate, you guys, which takes me back to the Apple Studio display. I was actually considering getting a second studio display for my desk setup because I just loved it so much. But then I was realizing, wait, the new M4 iPad Pro is $300 less than the studio display. And I do 3D rendering and 3D design for fun outside of my video editing work. Um, it's something I'm actually really getting into and really enjoying and kind of putting more time into um, outside of my video work. And so I realized, wait, the iPad Pro is kind of the perfect machine for that. I do all of that 3D design on the iPad. And so if I could use it for multiple reasons, but it could benefit my screen real estate on my MacBook Pro, it's kind of a win-win. And that's when I learned about extended display. Um, and I'll show you what that means. Don't mind this camera that's just floating over here. This is actually a great example of the Osmo Pocket 3 and why I love it so much. It's just on a little C-stand clip and I'm able to shoot it this direction. Uh, I'm packing for an upcoming trip where I'll be out of the country for a month, so everything is everywhere, so don't mind that. But basically what you can do is go into your displays and you're gonna find in your displays right here, you can extend this to anything that is part of kind of your Apple setup. And so basically I just click plus iPad and then right here, I now have an extended display of my laptop. And what you'll see is I just bring my cursor over and it's right here. I have my MacBook dock on this side as well. And so what I typically do is I'll bring Notion into this setup. It's also incredibly fast and responsive. It's kind of insane. And then I'll keep my uh, Final Cut Pro over here on my MacBook. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna be like, oh, well, why don't you just use Final Cut Pro on your iPad Pro? Personally, I do not like that setup. I love having just like all of my key commands, my trackpad, everything. And from my understanding, the Final Cut Pro software for the iPad is very different than the one that's on the Mac. And so I just prefer to use it. So I absolutely love this setup because I'm able to reference my notes over here. And I mean, this is nothing crazy, you guys. I'm just using a second display. But I love that the iPad is useful for more than just being an iPad on its own. A lot of people hate the fact that the iPad Pros do not have Mac OS uh, capabilities, but of course they're not gonna sacrifice their, you know, laptop lines so that people can just exclusively use an iPad, although as much as I would wish for that. Uh, something really cool though is, so we have the extended mirror display in this one, but as you can see down here, I'm able to pull back and go into my iPad setup. So these are some of the 3D renderings that I do. It's, you know, just fun silly stuff like that. Something really useful for video editing is using your iPad as your finder window. And so you're able to reference it 
pull your footage. So imagine I need this, you know, shot from my FX30. I just drag and drop it into my timeline and nothing ever had to be opened on this side because I will say opening Finder is pretty annoying because you have to have multiple folders and windows and things like that. You're always using you know, different finder windows. And so what you could do is have one over here, have your main control panel over here. And this is just nice for referencing like whatever it is that you're editing at the time. And so I love being able to just like look over here, grab the clips, let's say, you know, okay, I want this A cam. It's like, all right, perfect. Drop it into the timeline. And then on this screen, I quickly have access to it. Um, or I can just even preview clips as well. Getting back and forth is super, super cohesive. I think it's the promotion, I'm not sure um, exactly, but I absolutely love it. Uh, for me, just the use case is really, really good. Another thing that's really useful for me with the iPad is being able to drag my Google Chrome over here and use it on the iPad. I'm not stuck to just Safari. Now, a lot of you are like, well, why don't you just use the iPad apps? I already feel the, the anger coming in the comments. And that's because to be honest, I don't like typing on the iPad screen, but I don't want to bring the key, I don't want to buy a magic keyboard because I don't use the iPad for those things. And so I like having this extended display because I'm able to just house everything I need over here. So, you know, if I'm researching for a video and like, let's say this one, I'm able to use my keyboard. I don't have to bring another thing. And then I'm able to actually just research right here. Um, and I love it. Now, something else you can actually do within the same display area, you're able to actually just link your keyboard and mouse from your MacBook to the iPad. So this means I'm not able to drag anything from this screen to this screen, but I am able to just literally go like this, as long as it's arranged properly, which it is up here, um, come over here and I'm able to scroll and type with my MacBook. So, you know, I'm able to do research and things like that for videos. Um, and I don't have to have the magic keyboard. I don't have to have an extended mouse because for me personally, if I'm using this as an extended display, it's mostly so that I can do research. It's so that I can take notes. It's so I can reference scripts and things like that. Um, and then of course I'm using the iPad in my everyday life to be able to do 3D design and 3D renders. So this is just nice that I'm not having to add extra items. I can just bring these two devices and they're doing great stuff. So right here in this plus on the displays, I'm able to switch it and then suddenly I'm able to drag and drop my windows over here. But mostly, like I said, what I love using this for is my finder window. I like to have this kind of like reference panel that is just my clips. And a lot of people, a lot of editors I know do this, is they have a monitor that's specifically just so that they can drag and drop clips into their Final Cut Pro timeline or their DaVinci timeline or Premiere, whatever you're using. Um, I've just always loved Final Cut. And like I said, I'm an Apple fan girl, so I haven't felt the need to change it. Yeah, this is just nice, like having this reference and this ability. So for me, this is kind of a win-win. Another huge part of this that is a total winner for me is that I'm able to very easily go like this. <laughs> and I have two incredibly strong devices that I can have in such a small footprint with the MacBook Air that I hope to upgrade to maybe next year or whenever that I feel like it's time. It'll be even more lightweight and even thinner and I'm able to just throw this into a bag, go edit at a coffee shop, you know, wherever I am in the world, and it's not taking up a crazy footprint in my bag. That is something I absolutely love as well. Similar to that, I can say, I don't need the iPad or I don't need the MacBook, and I can just take one or the other. And so again, Apple just kind of knows how to do that with their ecosystems. They know how to make things work together well. Now, of course, there's beef with the uh, Apple Pro Pencil and, you know, the old one not working with the new iPad, so they're forcing you to upgrade. That's just Apple, right? I mean, they've done that with every charger under the sun, whether it's for iPhones or for MacBooks. But for travel, I can't imagine a better ecosystem. Pairing this with an iPhone, you're able to airdrop everything to each other. That's huge. Um, and then, of course, you can use the iPad Final Cut app, but you can actually share from the iPad timeline to the MacBook timeline. So that's why for me, I also don't use the iPad Final Cut because it seems like it would actually limit my workflow versus benefit it. So doing the screen sharing kind of does all of that for me. So what do you guys think? Is this a setup that you would want to use if you happen to need the iPad Pro for something else? 
Um, and then would you want to carry both of these devices when you're traveling? Obviously, if you're going on certain trips, it doesn't make sense. But if you are working abroad, you're working remote, this is a great dynamic to have at your Airbnb or wherever you're living for that month or coffee shops, things like that. Um, it's just nice to be able to have that dual real estate and you're not having to lose your productivity while traveling. Because that is something that you have to learn how to really finesse so that you don't just completely throw your work out the window while traveling. We're actually about to head out to Italy for a month and I'm gonna be using this setup exclusively while there. And so I'll do a follow-up video as well, kind of sharing that experience. And if I really enjoyed having these two screens and these two devices to be able to continue doing my work abroad. If you haven't subscribed or liked this video yet, make sure you go ahead and do that and we're just really thankful for you to be a part of the gravel travel community and to thank you we actually are giving a 10 percent discount use the discount code yt friends when you're at checkout if you need any epic travel products for your upcoming travels but we appreciate you being here and we'll catch you in the next one peace